like this to launch terrorist attacks abroad. Do you believe them? Again, uh, we are going to listen to their words. What we will be looking for are their actions. Uh, it's their deeds that matter to us, uh, especially on a matter of, of uh, utmost importance like this. Connor? Non-Afghan question? Go ahead. But, but can I get a non-Afghan question? Well, there is relative common in Kabul. There are reports of atrocities in other cities that the Taliban hold. When, before, before the fall of Kabul, the embassy was corroborating some of those reports. Do you have anything to say about that? Do you have any confirmation of whether or not some of these atrocities have been committed, extrajudicial killings, um, harassment of women, things like that? Uh, we are going to be watching very closely. Um, right now, as we've said, this is a fluid situation. We, of course, had seen um, uh, and the world had seen uh, atrocities uh, occur uh, over the course of uh, weeks and months uh, as the Taliban's uh, campaign progressed. Uh, over the past 72 hours, uh, the conditions on the ground have, have changed dramatically. Uh, we are going to be watching uh, very closely for uh, a couple reasons. Uh, number one, uh, we are going to be working uh, with the international community to do all we can to provide humanitarian assistance, to provide support uh, to uh, vulnerable Afghans, uh, Afghans who may be at risk going forward uh, from the Taliban. Now, of course, they claim otherwise, but uh, we are going to be poised to work with the international community to pull every lever we can uh, to use every tool at our disposal with the international community uh, to provide support and assistance. Uh, but two, there's the question of what comes next. Uh, the question not only of what the United States uh, does vis-a-vis -a, -vis a future Afghan government, uh, but what the international community does. Uh, and so this is another reason why we're watching very closely. We have made very clear our expectations uh, of any government with which we could be expected to work in Kabul. Uh, if that government doesn't respect uh, the basic rights of its own citizens, including the rights uh, of its uh, women and girls, that is not a government uh, that we would be expected to work with. Importantly, it's not a government that the rest of the world, or at least much of the international community, would be expected to work with. And, and finally, but there, there's, there's a tangible element to this, uh, and it's a, it's a point that is quite important um, uh, because it has practical implications. Uh, it is more than a matter of political recognition uh, or diplomatic connectivity. It is a matter of, uh, in some ways, uh, uh, it's an existential question. It has the potential to be an existential question for any government. Uh, we know that the government that had existed uh, in Kabul over the past 20 years could not have uh, endured were it not for the support of the United States, the largest bilateral donor, were it not for the support of the United Nations, were it not for the support of the international community. The same uh, could well be true of what comes next. Uh, it is a question of carrots. We certainly have uh, carrots in terms of the assistance that uh, any future government in Afghanistan might be expected to need, uh, but also uh, the sources of leverage that we've talked about. Uh, the fact that working with our partners in the international community, working with uh, the UN, uh, there are significant costs uh, that uh, collectively we would be able to impose on any government that does not respect the basic rights of its people, and that's something we're prepared to do. So you're saying that the behavior that is what matters. What happened to the idea that any government imposed by the barrel of a gun is what matters? We have, we have always said that um, we, like our partners in the international community, uh, supported a political settlement. Uh, we believe, uh, present tense, we believe that a political settlement uh, stands the best chance of uh, offering protection, offering inclusion for the people of Afghanistan. Uh, we continue to believe that. Uh, if you take a look at what the members of the UN Security Council said, they continue to uh, believe that. But, but uh, this group has seized power by force now, and, and they're not, they don't care about those statements of, of, of what you believe. This is a terrorist organization that now has control of the country, and you're saying that their future behavior is what you'll weigh. Well, how, does, how does what has happened for the last week and a half, months, not matter more? It, it, all of this absolutely matters. 
All of this absolutely matters. And what we're saying now uh, will matter. It will matter to any future government. Not so much because the United States is saying it, but because uh, as you've seen over the past couple days, the international community, a broad swath of the international community, the countries uh, that are in many ways will be most important, uh, Afghanistan's neighbors, uh, important stakeholders in the region, uh, some of the most generous countries on the face of the earth, the countries that have allowed, had allowed uh, the Afghan government to endure uh, over the past 20 years. Uh, when we're speaking with one voice and we're talking about uh, assistance, potential assistance, and we're talking uh, conversely uh, about the tools, uh, the implications, the sources of leverage that we are prepared to wield against any government that does not respect the basic rights of its citizens, uh, those are more than words. Those have practical consequences. Matt.